Okay, cool. Well, welcome. Um, hopefully, uh, this event will help to clear things up for you. This can be a pretty chaotic raid, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So it's you know it's important that you follow instructions uh, as best that you can. You know it, it's going to seem a little overwhelming, but um, I'm gonna quarterback us through the whole thing. I'm gonna be talking us through the whole raid as well, but I want to explain things at the outset. So for those of you who have done uh, Heroic Abbot, uh, the water around the main platform is very similar in that you know it takes damage when you're in it, and so if you get tossed out there or fall into it for some reason, then you want to just swim back to the main platform. And it's like lava in the sense that you know if you are jumping through it, you tick damage every time you hit the surface. So you don't want to jump through it. You don't want to jump unless you're jumping out or you're uh, healing yourself. You can jump, heal, and swim through it. And there's actually a lot of value in learning how to swim through this water and jump healing because there are some destinations out in the corners of the zone that some of us will need to go to. So what's going to happen is we're going to step forward and beat the abbot down to 70% health-ish, and then he's going to disappear. And at that point, one dimension door will appear across the platform from us. And I want everybody who's new to go into that D door. It'll be directly across from us. And inside that D door will be a little room with some trash mobs. There'll be a couple of beholders and a death knight. You'll need to kill all of that. And then the, after that stuff's all killed, there's a sarcophagus in there that needs to be broken. And then there's a quest item on the altar. There are going to be three different D doors throughout this raid, and all the rooms look identical, and they're all generally the same in that they have some trash mobs, they have a death knight, and they have a quest item on the altar. But it's different quest items that do different things. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, the item that's on the altar because I want to show on the video. Once we finish uh, up in that first D-door, we're all going to come back out the way we went in. You, 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 you cut out after um, you talked about uh, going to take the item, by the way. Oh, okay. I think I stopped talking for, for a moment. So after we, uh, after we get that quest item in there, which is going to be the goggles in that first D-door, and the goggles are going to allow the person wearing them to see these invisible tiles that are phasing in and out all around the water. On the left and right side there's a whole bunch of invisible tiles and some of them are phasing in and out. Some of them are static, but most of them are phasing in and out. And they basically are a path out to two more D-doors, one way out in the northeast of the zone and one way out in the southwest of the zone. And both uh, of those D-doors, like I said, have rooms that are basically just like the first D-door have uh, mobs that need to be killed and a quest item in there and a sarcophagus that needs to be broken. So there's only one set of goggles, but uh, once you know somebody is, is practiced with the goggles a few times and they know where those tiles are, they can swim to those D-doors and just, you know self-healing and, and just jump and heal and, and swim directly to those D-doors and jump in. And then once those D doors, uh, once the trash is cleared there and the sarcophagi are broken, and then everybody comes back to the main platform. Now, while after the first D door is done, and while the D door crews are doing the outer D doors, most of the people are going to just stay on the main platform. And in this particular case, we have folks that are going to be crowd controlling for us. So, Meantime and Vanna both have uh, good charms, and they're going to be charming basically everything. So the only thing that other people will need to do is DPS the abbot when he comes down. You can see the abbot's on his perch on, uh, on the hand of his statue across from us right now. And he's going you know, to jump down and go back up periodically. So if you see the abbot, you need to be DPSing him. If he is ignored, he will do his special abilities more often, like Inferno. And Inferno is the same as, is generally the same as it from Heroic Abbot, if you've seen it in there. It, it's, he says, I call upon the Inferno, and the entire platform goes up in flames like, a, like one giant firewall. At that point, uh, there are some safe spots around the edges of the platform. 
basically if it's it's where the archers spawn which is at the corners of the platform you can see that the platform is not a perfect circle that there are corners and where those archers spawn is where you want to be standing with like the, your toes hanging off the edge as close to the edge as you can be when there's an inferno now hypothetically if we stay on the abbot he won't inferno at all so a lot of times you do a run there won't be any infernos uh, if the group knows what they're doing but there still may be so you need to know what happens in case of an inferno and if you get hit by the inferno you need to drink a curse pot because it does act as a curse but it doesn't show up on your buff bar as a curse you just have to know to drink a curse pot and if you don't if you get hit by the inferno and you don't drink a curse pot you will continue to tick hit point and spell point damage until you are dead and all your spell points are gone So after all the D-Doors are done, we all come back to the main platform. Lady Vol will appear, and at no point in the raid do we ever need to DPS her. She's just there to give us a hard time. She's going to be chasing us around with her Dragon Breath, which I believe does poison damage, and then she's also going to be doing the Marks of Death. And this is, this is clutch right here. She does these, like, blue fog things. They look like blue cloud kills. And if you're in that zone you're gonna tick for a lot of damage really fast you can actually move through it pretty safely but you never want to just hang out in it and as she's casting it she'll put down a blue ring to let you know that's where it's gonna be in a few seconds so if you see that get out of it and she's gonna put down six eight of these at a time and each one lasts about 30 seconds so they're continually gonna be spawning and then disappearing and spawning elsewhere for the rest of the raid at that point so it's important to have good spatial awareness in here. Don't just move around blindly. So at that point, we will be DPSing the Abbot down to 50%. This is after all the D-Doors are done. DPS the Abbot down to 50%. And then he's going to take a break, and th three Death Knights will appear. And we're going to beat them down in a specific order. We're gonna, there's one with no aura. We're going to get that one first. There's one with a Tensor's Transformation, we're going to get that one second, and there's one with a red globe around it, we're going to get that one third, and I, I'm going to call that out as we're doing it. Once the three Death Knights are dead, then it's the final beatdown. We just need to beat the Abbot down to zero, and then we win. But when the three Death Knights are dead, Vol does this pounce attack, and it's like an AoE death effect. And if you don't have death block on, you will die. So it's important to have death block in here. Death ward won't be good enough because there are beholders that are going to dispel that. Unless you were to remember to recast death ward on you right before she does that attack. And about every 30 seconds or so that it takes to do that final beatdown, she's going to do that pounce attack again. So it's really important to beat down the abbot as fast as possible at that point because that uh, that pounce AoE death effect that... Uh, that Vol does is devastating. It does a lot of damage even if you don't die from it. There's going to be a lot of trash around the platform, but like I said, our caster is going to be charming it all. With the exception of a couple quells, they cannot be charmed. So I'm going to need a trash person, somebody who knows what they're doing, to take care of those, please. Actually, since we have two casters, maybe you guys can just do it. If you guys both work on crowd control, you guys can just take care of the quells too. Okay, cool. So I'm going to type in jobs here so everybody knows what they're doing. I will need people to do outer D doors. I'm just looking for people that are experienced with doing that. Quite quick, didn't we? <laughs> LBN, can you do the Southwest uh, D door, please? Yeah, I can do your other D door. Okay, and I'm gonna do Northeast. Dread, you can do Southwest. I need one more person to go Northeast with me. I'll go with Eugene. Yeah. yeah. Have you done it before? No, but pretty much I only have to come in with you, keep you alive, and kill the stuff in there. Okay. So I was listening to the explanation, you know, kill the stuff, then kill the sarcophagus. Okay, so what 
what you'll need to do is follow me very closely because I'll have goggles that show us the safe path to the D door. So I'll I'll talk us to that D door, okay? Yeah, no worries. Okay. I just, I just follow you the way every time every time you jump, I jump. Everybody who's new is going to go into the first D door. In fact, I, I basically want everybody to go in there except the two wizards and uh, let's see. How about Dread? You stay out and help DPS to Abbott as well. Okay. So everybody but the two casters, the two wizards, and Dread will just go into the first D door. All right, let's go ahead and get some buffs, folks, and we will get this going. I can actually go in that one because I can stone both those beholders before they anti-magic me. It'll make it a little bit easier. Okay. I'll just make sure to lay down some charms out here before popping in. Okay, the abbot is down in the east. His uh, his damage reduction is the same as heroic abbot. It's bludgeoning and magic. He also has a mantle of invulnerability, so he's immune to fourth level and lower spells. All right, first D door is up. Everybody who's new, go ahead and go into it. It's in the south. And then just start beating on the trash and killing the Death Knight. One other important thing is in this raid is you never want to wait for somebody else to heal you because there are so many things that are going to disrupt casting and there's beholders, there's quells. So, you know, if you're waiting around for somebody else to heal you, you may end up dead. So if you can self-heal, you should. It doesn't mean that other people aren't going to want to heal you. It's just that they may not be able to heal you. <laughs> All right, Akagen, come over here to the right as soon as you get out. Yep, yep coming. Where are you at, buddy? I'm jumping up and down immediately to the right as we came out of the D door. Right, there right. you are. Okay. So there are a bunch of tiles I can see that you can't. So I just want you to jump with me, okay? Yep, yep. Have it down. All right, got a little bit of lag there. I see you're lagging too. Okay, we're on a static blue tile now. Just watch where I jump. We're on another static blue tile now. We're gonna do a few more jump, two more jumps here, real quick. Just follow me. Great. And one more. I'm on a static blue tile now. All right, one more jump to another blue tile. The blues don't phase in and out. Okay, stay close now. Inferno. Stay close now, Akajim. We're going to be doing a bunch of uh, jumps. 
Yeah, no worries. If you fall in the water, just jump out. Perfect. Okay, now we're just going to make our way to that D door here in just a moment. Yep, yep. From here, just jump and click on the D door. Yeah, I'm sticking, I'm sticking close to using a sign in between. I know, I can see I'm pretty much fucked up right now. Sorry about that movie, man. Someone smashed early, we have uh, the holders now, but we got them uh, dealt with. Oh, yep, I something I should have specified that, um, we like to smash. We like to uh, finish the, the outer rooms at the same time, because as soon as the the first outer room is done, the beholders will spawn. And so, if we just wait and do the the two outers at the same time, that's a little bit less time that we have to deal with the beholders. Not a big deal. Not all groups are going to do that. We're almost done with the northeast. Okay, we're done with the northeast. Go ahead and grab one of these stacks of rocks, Akagen, off of the... There you go. And that's going to break people out of the encasement, just like with uh, regular Abbott. In the meantime, do you want to focus on archers and I'll focus on uh, other trash? Yes, sir. I think. So now Lady Vol has a little speech that she does here. Abbott's going to appear in just a moment, and we're going to beat him down. All right, Abbott's in the south. When you have your casters separated on um, uh, on who's charming what, it means you don't have to uh, switch your gear around that much. I have like three different sticks for charming and stoning and all that. Inferno. Ready to go to where the archers spawn. Yeah, I did too, and I'm having a little hard time with lag. That was phenomenal. I died in the water. I'm in the center for rays. We'll have another beholder up here. Thank you. If you die, go to the center for a rays. I'm in the center too for a rays. Thank you. Because people can reach you no matter where they are on the platform if you're in the center. Inferno. Inferno. Go to the edge where the ca uh, where the archers are. Ah, oh, I got stuck. I'm in the water. Okay, we got Death Knights now, but don't worry about those right now. Let's get everybody raised. This is kind of a lull in the raid. There's not a lot of pressing stuff going on, especially if you have good CC. So this is a good time to regroup. Stay out of the blue cloud. Such a crook. Such a crook. 
All right, now we want to go for the Death Knights. We want to go for, in High Lords, we call her Laura. Laura with no aura. She's in the north east right now. Just to differentiate them, we give them names. And then there's there's Spencer, who has tensors, and there's Zed, who's red. So we want to go with the one with no aura. Not the one who's red, and not the one with tensors transformation. We hold her loose. So we want to bring them to the outside of the platform and move clockwise around the platform as the marks of death come up. And that's just so that everybody knows where to go. So Laura with no aura is in the south right now. So everybody who's working on Death Knight should be on the south Death Knight, the one with no aura. And this one has a cool... Okay. This, uh... Laura with no aura has a quelling effect, so that's why we kill her first, which is an AoE quelling effect. And the one with Tensor's Transformation has a debuff that makes spellcasting cost up to like 19 times more than the normal cost of a spell, and it also can slow down ranged tunes attack speed. So that's why we go with for Spencer next. Spencer with tensors. So Laura's almost dead here. We're gonna go for Spencer with tensors next. Quells up. Spencer with tensors in the south right now. All right, melees collapse in the center. And we just want to beat down the abbot now. Oh, Abbot's in the east. We beat down the abbot and we win. Good job, folks. And that is Market Best. And that's it, and that's all. Yeah, you want to wait till that subsides. <laughs> Akajin, why don't you go ahead and do the honors on the chest since it's your first run? Good luck, everyone. Does anyone need these markers uh, thread? You want to keep those? Yep, you definitely want to keep those. That's what you use to upgrade your gear with. Oh, it's like, uh, I've got a wild thumb that Terry and Lee can send. But it, it requires a lot, like 150 or something. Ooh, it takes like low drops. I know. It's a what drop? Sanctified gloves. Who got them? Oh, Hantu, grats. Hantu. Looks like main time in five. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about the raid before we break? They get main time. No, I think you just remember to raise and run from that blue stuff. I mean, that's what got me the most was I'd raise and then I'd try to figure out where I was supposed to go and smash something with my axe and get caught in that blue stuff. Yep, it's really important to keep an eye on that stuff, and it's 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 a little tricky to do that when you're new. It's you got to get used to that, but you'll get used to it in a few runs. 
Take it to Barry and yeah. Yeah. It's for purposes of the video. A stuff has well got me a couple of times. Well, my two deaths. I've been telling things and suddenly it just popped up on me like, oh. Thank you there, Mr. Jr. Thanks for I coming. It. This is Croc. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. I ain't yeah, no thanks, Ninja. Just for purposes of the video, I just want to show you that you can swim through here and jump heel. And then if you're ever going to the outer D door, you want to swim right alongside this uh, barrier here. And then the D door would be right there. Also, for what it's worth, the, uh, the tiles aren't there anymore once you get done with both the outer D doors. So there's nothing to jump on right now. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for that. It was fun. Thanks for watching those on YouTube. If you have any questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube. And if you happen to be on Sarlana, you're welcome to send me a tell.